Hey comic book community, this is Guy's Comic Life, and I'm coming to you with a new comic book day haul. It's been a while. I skipped last week, I think. Today is September 26th, and man, it was a great big week for comic. Last week was even bigger with the release of this book right next to me. I had no idea how much that thing would blow up, man. Um, there's been lots of first appearances, deaths, great covers, just is an amazing time to be a comic book fan and uh you know again thank you for watching if you like what you see in the video please um comment uh give a like and subscribe for uh, future content okay guys so let's start off with the most talked about book of the year which is batman damned by brian nazarello and lee bermejo so right here hands down the artwork inside is the best interior artwork to a comic i've seen all year Lieber Mayo has created something very special here. It's it's very much Batman Noir and Joker, you know, 2.0, you know. He just draws Batman like I've never seen anyone draw Batman. The only one who comes close is like Alex Ross or Jim Lee. Lieber Mayo is just I don't know, I don't know what to say. Uh the artwork takes your breath away. And it sucks because the artwork is overlooked because of a panel or two which features Batman's junk, the Batcock, Batwang. Interesting. Uh, Batman's in the Batcave, he takes off his Batsuit and just two panels where you see the shading of his penis. And because of that, we live in such a messed up society that this book is going for like 60 to to $100 on eBay. But... I'm not like that. I'm not going to sell this book. This book means a lot because I think it's special. And if you just want to take a regular comic book and put it next to Batman Damned, that's the size of it. It is a magazine-sized issue. This ain't no regular book, man. This is something special. And this is the first DC Black Label issue. This was supposed to be geared towards mature readers. So... Who was complaining that Batman even showed his penis in the first place? This book is for mature audiences. It's like they should be able to handle seeing a guy's junk. It's like mostly men read comics anyway. Why would they be offended seeing another guy's junk? So clearly a woman or a liberal social justice warrior saw this comic book and complained and it doesn't look good for DC, so of course they're going to censor later printings. It sucks. And um, I just wanted to get my rant out of the way for this book, and it's, it's a shame that it's being overshadowed by, you know, that junk. But yeah, great issue. If you can pick this up, please do it. I know it's very difficult now to get a copy, but if you can, um, I'd recommend it. Issues 2 and 3 shouldn't be that hard to track down because... Everything's probably going to be censored from here on out, so any plans they had for, like, nudity is probably going to be gone. Um, but I recommend putting it on your pull list for the future. I know Harley Quinn is going to make an appearance in the next one. Let's do that one next. That's, uh, more D Last week was heavy DC. This week was more Marvel. This is Justice League number 8. This was my cover of the week last week. I picked this up solely because of the cover. Jim Lee is my favorite Batman artist. Look at this. This is one of the best Joker covers of all time. I don't need to say anything more. There's even a pencils version of this, which is going for over a hundred dollars, a variant with just the pencils. Like that, like, oh my god, look at that smile. That is so sinister. Very, very good. Nice job, Jim Lee. Very good. And another amazing cover last week was this right here, Batman number 55 by Francesca Mattina. Now, I was done picking up Batman. I've been skipping it, like, right after the wedding. I didn't pick it up. I picked up 53 because that was the first time he was back in his new suit. Um, I wasn't really a fan of the Rebirth suit, but they've gone back to the classic Bat suit, kind of like how Superman's gone back to his classic suit, so it's nice to see that. And I love Nightwing, and Nightwing was in this book with Batman. I love it when they team up. And the only thing I didn't really like in this issue was the dialogue. It was very campy and very childish. Um, so like when Batman and Knight were, were fighting together, the art was, was uh, great because Tony S. Daniel does the interiors. And Tony Daniel's one of my favorite Batman artists. 
So the artwork is good and Batman's with Nightwing. It was cool and there's a shocking twist at the end of this book. This is like the most I've enjoyed a Batman like single title book probably since before the whole Poison Ivy storyline. So that's a long time. Yeah, like the wedding sucked. The Booster Gold story sucked. The Poison Ivy story sucked. Probably since Batman 38. So almost 20 issues ago that I like liked Batman. And it wasn't even like that good. It was okay. But we'll see where it goes. I don't think... I think Nightwing's okay. I'm not going to spoil it. And then one Marvel last week was the finale to the Null Saga, Venom number 6. It's very, very sick, man. This is one of the only few books I'm like consistently picking up for Marvel that's like on my pull list and I'll continue to get because Donny Cates is the best writer, writer in the game. He's fire. He inspires me through his writing. I never thought Venom could be this cool or compelling. Um, the villain Null was a great challenge for Eddie and told the origin in a symbiote in a way that I thought was very unique. Um, so in here, Eddie just teams up with uh, Rex Strickland's symbiote and they merge to become like a war Venom and use a heavy arsenal. And they defeat Null at the end of the book. I don't think Null's dead, but his symbiote, the Grendel, the dragon, I think is dead. Um, and it looks like Rex sacrificed his life to save Eddie. But I think Eddie Brock uh, or the symbiote died and went to hell at the end of this issue because in the next issue we see that Eddie has like the son of Satan symbol on his chest and it's called the Abyss. So I really think the next uh, storyline is going to be about like Eddie Brock and the symbiote in hell and you know trying to get out. At least that's just my take. This is a big week for Spider-Man. So these are the new books for the week. This is uh, Edge of Spider Geddon, number four. Um, this is the first appearance of Norman Osborn as the eight-legged Spider-Man. Looks like a tarantula. Pretty cool. I love that red and black color scheme. There's also a new Green Goblin in this book. Well, not really the Green Goblin. They're, they just call him the Goblin. And the Goblin in this book is actually Harry Osborn. So it's actually the first appearance of two new characters. Harry Goblin and this new Norman Osborn Spider-Man. Spider Geddon's been pretty weird, but it's introduced some cool characters like the Mech Venom and Spider Ben. And this was a great read, and this is my pick of the week. This is Spider Geddon number zero. I'm going to get the Clayton Crane cover next week, but I saw this 1 in 25 variant sitting on the shelf, and my comic shop is usually out of variants. And I loved Mary Jane in the PS4 game, and this is a. Uh, Homage to a Humberto's Ramo cover that I really, really like. So there's the Spider-Man plushie. I thought that was really sweet. So this is the first appearance of the Spider-Man PS4 universe in comics. So further down the road, I think this is actually going to be worth something. Because that game that came out, the Spider-Man PS4 game, is one of the best games I've ever played. And I see them making a sequel to that game. And this care this Spider-Man universe blowing up in the future. If you haven't gotten spider again number zero, I highly recommend getting it. And I'm very happy that that whole universe is in comics now because that game was amazing. That was like one of the best Spider-Man stories ever told, and it was in a game. More Spider-Man. It was a big, big week for Spider-Man, and I'm very happy about that. He's my favorite, favorite superhero. So this is number six of The Amazing Spider-Man called Date Night. Um, this is an interesting story. I, I liked it. Um, not too much, though, you know. Cover kind of speaks for itself. The first half of this issue kind of deals with, uh, Peter being annoyed by Booster Gold being his roommate and, uh, Mary Jane actually thinking he's a good roommate because he helps around the apartment and was cleaning and Peter's like, he never cleans. He's just doing that because Mary Jane's here. And Booster Gold takes Peter out to a nightclub and it's funny because that's like where all of Peter's villains hang out. And he, like, feels uncomfortable there, but they do, like, a trilogy game, like a, no, trivia game there. And Peter does really good in the game. And he actually starts to have fun in the club. But then Wilson Fisk gets, uh, the Kingpin gets mad at uh, Booster Gold for, why did I say Booster Gold? Boomerang for uh, betraying him. So he puts a price on his head, and everyone in the club now wants to kill Boomerang. 
So I think Peter Parker is going to have to defend Boomerang, and Boomerang will discover Peter is Spider-Man because he's not in his uniform in this in the bar. So that'll be pretty cool. And next we got a couple DC books. This was the big book of the week, which was Heroes in Crisis. This did not disappoint. The artwork was fucking phenomenal. Tom King, you might have been sucking ass in Batman recently, but this was a good, good read. It's a simple read. So basically, Booster Gold has accidentally or purposely killed a bunch of heroes in here. Some, like, minor characters die. Um... Like, like Hot Spot and Blue Jay, but the big characters that die, I'm going to spoil it in like five seconds. Wally West, The Flash, and Roy Harper, The Arsenal, Red Arrow, die in this issue. They're dead, but no one ever stays dead in comics very long, but those two characters are dead. Wally West's Flash and Roy Harper's Arsenal. Wow. Very, very hard issue to read. Very sad very compelling i love when books are compelling we got a key first appearance here this is justice league dark number three i haven't read it yet but i knew it was going to be hot because it's the first full appearance of the upside down man and it's his first cover appearance as well and the first two issues were great so i've been sticking with this title and finally my uh, cover of the week goes to, no surprise, Joshua Middleton. If he does a Batgirl cover, odds are it's probably going to make cover of the week. And this is number 27. And this is the first new Batgirl costume. So it's Batgirl in her new suit. So it's another key book, and it's a Joshua Middleton cover. So pretty, pretty damn sweet. It was a good week for comics, and so was last week. A lot, a lot of stuff came out. Very impressed by the new books. Oh, yeah. And I unbagged a comic book that was in a poly bag. I didn't know what was inside it. But it was a Civil War number two, number three. And I got the uh, sketch variant to the Hulk, the Joe Quesada. And I guess uh, this was the death of the Hulk. So I unbagged that, and I just wanted to see what was in it. I was bored. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked the comic book haul. Tune in next week for another comic book haul. Um, it's going to be another good week. Another good week. So... Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, enjoy hunting, um, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys. Later.